Hey viewers, my name's Kara. You're watching my personal channel, CuteWitch772, and today I have a book review for you. The book that we are going to be talking about today is Diary of a Witch by Sybil Leek. And I came across this beautiful old copy of this book at a secondhand shop in a nearby town that I frequent, and I had been helping out with organizing their books, and so the owner told me I could take whatever books I wanted. A week or so later, I went back to visit, and she had gotten a new box of books, and the first thing on the middle shelf, top of the stack, was Diary of a Witch, and I read it, like, on the side, and I thought, oh my god, what is this book? It's very worn, because it is old and used. So at first I didn't see who it was written by, I just saw Diary of a Witch, grab it off the shelf, you know, anything with witch in it I'm into, and then realized it was Sybil Leek's like, autobiography and thought, oh my gosh, this is so cool, I have to read this. It's a very easy read, it goes pretty quickly, the font isn't super small, and it has, how many chapters, about 14, yeah, about 14 chapters. So. Alright, so the first thing, I know you're all thinking, if you know who Sybil Leek is, is that a lot of people are like, Sybil Leek, like, you know, like she's a liar, she's a fraud, she's a phony, she's a charlatan, whatever, you know, and people feel this way about a lot of people, about a lot of witches who claim to have psychic powers and all these other things, because a lot of us, if we don't possess these capabilities, a lot of us are very skeptical, myself included, you know, that's, it's not something that everybody who walks down the street and tells me that they know this, that, and the other thing, I don't automatically believe them, you know, it's not that kind of thing. But reading this book, regardless, like, there are definitely things in here where she talks about some pretty amazing things that she's able to do that maybe, I've never seen anyone do in real life, so I don't, I don't know. But far be it from me to say that this person couldn't do it, you know? And if not, she's a really great storyteller. And aside from all those things, in the book, her actual philosophy of witchcraft and, like, what she feels it means to be a witch and our responsibilities regarding magic, the relationship between magic and science, just... Yeah, I, I would consider them philosophies of witchcraft. Like, her major beliefs about that way of life, I totally love the things that she had to say. I wish I had, like, marked down specific quotes and things for you, but I will say that the, the entire book begins with a quote. So I'll, I'll just give you this. Before chapter one begins, there is this quote. I do the very best I know how. If the end brings me out all right, what is said against me won't amount to anything. If the end brings me out wrong, ten angels swearing I was right would make no difference. Abraham Lincoln. And the first sentence of the book itself is, I am a witch. Sybil Leek just... It, is amazing. I don't know. I just, and again, like whether you believe uh, the incredible things that she claims to be able to do or not, whether you've seen them or not, whether you can do these types of things, uh, you know, maybe that's different because I can't. So it would be different if you know that you're capable of these things, you're probably more likely to believe these things from other people. But regardless, I think, I think the book is worth reading. I really enjoyed it. There's a lot of really awesome stories in here that she tells. And like I said, I love her philosophy of witchcraft. And I also just love that it's a little sneak peek into how traditional coven magic was for her in the UK and what it was like for her when she came over to America in the first place and everybody wanted her to be on TV and to prove that she was a psychic and all this stuff. And it talks about... Um, things that she's done where she has done like paranormal investigations on camera and so supposedly somewhere there are recordings of these things and all this kind of stuff. I don't know, I didn't seek them out, but supposedly she has done various things on recordings, on um, video or whatever and 
cool, man. If you can find those and you feel like you need that proof, then awesome. But I just, I just really enjoy the discussions that she has about a lot of other things. She talks about reincarnation in this book, astrology, all types of things. One note that I do want to make um, for some of you, because this is something that is coming up so much more um, in today's current culture, as we are becoming more and more aware of cultural appropriation and things that we sh maybe should not be saying or doing, I will note that one of the chapters is about the time that she spent in the New Forest with people who, at the time at least, called themselves gypsies people of the Romani tradition or heritage who at the time called themselves by this name. And so for that entire chapter, she does use that word. So I would just have that as a warning for those of you who might be really angry about that to tell you, yes, it is in here. And just to remember that when this book was written, that was perceived as a more acceptable thing. And also from my perspective, I know that it is a hot button thing today as we are becoming more aware of the ways that different cultures are harmed by different types of things. There are, um, and some people have pointed out to me that in America it is a very different experience than if we were still in Europe or in India or in Egypt or anywhere else, that in America these things are perceived very differently so maybe it doesn't seem like as big of a deal here as it does overseas, but definitely throughout my life all well I don't know but I'll say many of the people I've met who are of Romani descent do continue to use that word for themselves and ask that their friends call them that for them it is something that they are speaking to power such as those of us who call ourselves pagans or those of us who call ourselves witches it's a similar thing because those words were also used negatively um, and I know it's different because this is cultural rather than just religious, but I just wanted to note that that word is used in this book, and some of us, especially in America, know people who still use that word for themselves, for their own culture. And I don't feel that it's ever right to tell people what to say or not to say about their own culture. And if someone asks me to call them that, I will call them that. If someone else asks me not to call them that, I will not call that person by that word. So I think it's just all respect. That's the only kind of like trigger warning-y thing in here that I think I should point out. Other things are just like, there was honestly nothing where I was like, oh my god, this woman is such a liar, like this is totally made up BS. It was just kind of like, oh, okay, I don't agree with that. Like, that's not something that I agree with in my practice. Or like, okay, I don't know. I've never seen anyone do that, but cool. Like, sounds awesome. I especially loved the stories of when she was younger. And there are actually a few things in here that she said that made me feel a lot more secure in different things that have happened to me throughout my lifetime that you know, like different ways that we experience the world as witches, different ways that the world experiences us, and just some little tidbits that she said that I was kind of like, oh, wow, like that really resonates with something that I have had a fear about or that I have had a worry about throughout my life, and I don't know, it's just cool. Oh, yeah, the other thing that I wanted to say is that, all right, so a while ago you may have seen I posted a video that Sorry, I just hit the computer, made a loud noise probably. A while ago I posted a video that I went to the grand opening of the Buckland Gallery and Museum of Witchcraft and Magic, which is in Cleveland. And while I was there, I was able to see all of the things that they had on display for the grand opening. And some of those things were athames and chalices and all different kinds of things. But there was a section of athames and one of the athames on display there was listed in the little key as being Sybil Leake's athame that came from her grandmother. And that athame is talked about in this book multiple times. Like that's so cool. As I was reading through this book and reading like some of the rituals that she did with certain people um, 
and then she would just casually mention I used my grandmother's athame. Like, when she's just writing this book, it's whatever, right? Like, that athame was probably not in that collection at the time. I don't know. She's just casually writing about her life, and like, yeah, I used my grandmother's athame, and now that athame is in a museum collection in Cleveland, Ohio, and I've seen it. I've been on the other side of glass from it. Like, Again, regardless of whether you think she's lying about psychic abilities, that kind of thing is cool. Like, hearing about history of witchcraft as it came to America, and, like, super cool. So I want to give a shout out to Raymond Buckland for collecting some of these awesome things from all of these other people, and having it in a collection that is now housed in Cleveland that we can go and see. And, you know, it has been elsewhere in Ohio before, but... I got to go and see it. And so if you can ever get to the Buckland Gallery in Cleveland, I highly recommend it. I plan on going back there and doing kind of a tour of things with them for my channel as well in the future. I haven't made plans exactly for it yet, but they invited me to do that. So I'm excited to do that in the future. And yeah, I mean, if you, if you want to read the book, I say go ahead and read the book. I don't know if I would recommend it for really new newbie witches because there might be some things in here that y you just tend to, when it's like the first thing you read, you tend to take it as gospel. There is no gospel of witchcraft. There's just not. There's different ways to do everything pretty much. And like I said, I really strongly agree with and love a lot of the things that she said in this book. And there are some other things that I was like, nah, okay, I don't agree with that. And because I'm already solid in my own practice and in my beliefs, I know what I can stop and think like, oh, maybe that's a different way I should think about things, and I know what things are like, oh, well, no, nope, that's not how I believe, but cool, cool that you believe that. And I just want to make sure that nobody necessarily reads this and thinks, oh, I have to believe this too. That's never true. You never have to believe what anyone else believes. Pretty much the only thing you have to do is if you're being initiated into a coven, you should probably do things the way that coven does it. Speaking of which, there's some really interesting stuff in here about how she was initiated and just the whole, like, how that culture worked. And that's, it's so different than what I would want to happen today in, you know, in my life. If I were to join a coven, it would not happen this way. But that's the way that things were done. And it's just so interesting to read about that. So if you're really interested in the history of witchcraft in the UK and coming to America, this, that, and the other thing, I recommend picking up a copy, especially if you can get it at the library or if you find it for free at a thrift store from someone who just decided to give it to you because you like to organize their books and volunteer time. You know, whatever. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you next time. Until then, don't forget to be awesome, blessed be, and goodbye.